It's not often you get to draw up on a 3D printed carabiner and put your life on the line for the sake of simulation. The real question is, would you? You're here to see me do just that. So why am I doing this? About four years ago, Stratasys came up with a new material for their polyjet printers, digital ABS. And I found out about it by watching this awesome video where they left a sprinter van off of a 3D printed link. This is when I decided that if that link can hold a van, it can hold me. And here we are, four years later, recording how I plan to break all HR safety regulations in one shot. Now, as false as it sounds, I do care for my safety, so I'm not just going to print some part and drop on it. We're going to use the simulation professional tools to have SOLIDWORKS design the carabiner for us and predict when it will fail. Let's get to work. I want SOLIDWORKS to do all the heavy lifting, but I still have to provide some initial geometry. So I made this carabiner by a sweep following the inside and a cross section with sort of random dimensions. By using design studies with simulation standard, I can allow SOLIDWORKS to incrementally change the cross section dimensions and run multiple static studies. But this means I could potentially have to review 15 or more results individually based on the increments defined. If I use design studies with SOLIDWORKS Simulation Professional, I can enable optimization. This will make SOLIDWORKS slowly homing to the ideal dimension to reduce the maximum stress on this part, potentially reaching the optimum design within just a couple of studies. I can then run a more detailed study on the winning geometry to make sure that I have the seal of approval before putting my weight on it. Before setting up a static study, I'll use the split line feature to score the faces where the rope contact occurs. I'll fix the stop face and use a remote load to apply it my way. The edges around this fixed face will create stress singularities which will affect my design study. But if these singularities are below the yield, that means that I have a safe part. And the most important step, selecting a material with proper digital ABS characteristics. And fortunately, I can't just let you have these material specs due to liability. Nah, I'm kidding. I do have to let you know, these values are based on my best personal opinion based on digital ABS data sheets. These values are not digital ABS material properties from a certified testing lab. Please don't get hurt using these values. I get the large displacement flag message, which means that the formation of this geometry is beyond the static solver scope. I definitely need to beef this guy up. And that's when the science study optimization comes in. To make the most of optimization, I'll give SOLIDWORKS a range for all the relevant dimensions instead of a max and min width increments. I'll create parameters to link these dimensions to the design study. Now, I don't have to be perfectly specific since I don't know the ballpark of my final results. Adding constraints determines the acceptance criteria for optimization to define success during its closed loop calculations and can also be used to monitor other values like the mass of this part. Goals, only available with Simulation Professional, let us determine what parameters to optimize. In this case, the maximum stress is to be minimized. We run the results, go grab coffee, tea, or whatever liquid personality of your choice and greet the winner on return. Although the design study is telling me it failed, it does not mean this data is of no use. Remember to always make sense of all your results. Multiple iterations have passed based on my constraints, but since 3D printing pricing is based on weight, I want to choose one of the lighter ones. These two are my main candidates due to lower stress and lesser mass, but I like iteration 10 best because it has the least displacement, and this will be ideal because digital ABS is brittle. And here it is. To be honest with you, it's more than evident this monster clip will hold. Putting my whole weight on it is not going to be that interesting. So I decided to kick it up a notch and use SOLIDWORKS Simulation Professional topology studies to reduce as much mass as possible and still keep it safe. By now you may be asking, Eric, are you dropping on this carabiner at all? Everything so far is static. Well, you're correct. Everything in this video will be static and I will eventually take a drop, but one step at a time. This is part one of the I'm Falling For You mini-series. 
Make sure you don't miss a dynamic drop by subscribing to our channel to get updates when we upload new videos. Now let's move to topology optimization. Topology studies are awfully simple to set up. All I have to do is copy my static study and add goals and constraints. My goal is to reduce the existing mass by 80% and also make sure that the lowest safety factor is more than 1.25. I can control the geometry by adding symmetry and if I wanted this part injection molded, I can optionally define a demold direction to ensure positive draft angles in the resulting part. Run the study and cross your fingers. The result shown is the ideal geometry for my converged constraints. Material plots, let me change the slider to check lighter and heavier geometry, but this also means we're deviating from the converged results. Naturally, going to the lighter extreme can give you unrealistic geometries. Your engineering senses should be tingling the further you go into the lighter area. Also, switching plots displays what mesh elements were found to be unnecessary. But how do I check if this is correct? How do I know these are valid? By checking the convergence plot, I can see the final values. This study achieved full convergence. The final mass corresponds to 80% reduction. My lowest safety factor is above 1.25 with a super safe 2.2. And the stiffness to weight ratio confirms supporting the load successfully. So what now? I can extract the geometry from results into a new configuration or file as a graphics, surface, or solid body. Since I am not too concerned about surface quality for this print, I saved a new solid body so I can add some tabs to keep the rope within the grooves. And finally, the moment I have been waiting for. Now, I do want to pause this video for a sec and tell you what I've done with the ropes here. My weight is going to be transferred from the scale to the carabiner by this top rope, then from the carabiner to the loop for my foot by this bottom rope. And this strand here, marked in blue, is not taking any of my weight. In fact, I'm not even squeezing it. That's just there because I didn't want to cut the rope. Let's test topology's acclaimed safety factor of 2.2. Then just a little bit of foot action to prove I am off the floor and go figure. Topology was right all along. Some of you may be curious to see what would happen if I tell topology to reduce the mass by 90, 95, or maybe even 98%. If so, stay tuned for part two of the Unfalling For You mini-series. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.